Would you ever pierce your nipples? No, but my dad has both of his nipples pierced. Really? It was a surfer thing back in the day. <laughs> Back to our stupid reaction to Inside Corbin. I'm Rick, and he calls it Instagram, Instagram and Twitter for juicy, juicy content. content. So okay, juicy. Put the camera in your belt. Open the case. Squat. Bang. First time I did juicy content with my left hand. Ew. <laughs> That's a personal thing we don't want to hear. And uh, follow us on a personal YouTube channel. Mm. So I'm doing different stuff over there. So mm. go check that out. Today we're doing a movie review. You little, you little, you little turds. Uh, for a movie called A Death in a Gunge, or In the Gunge. No, or in a gun. A gun. It's yeah. in the gun or a gun. Yeah. Two completely different films. Very completely Yes, <laughs> but amazingly with similar titles. Uh, Death in a Gunge was about this guy named Reggie mm -hmm. uh, who fell into the butt crack of King Kong. And they didn't know what to call that. They didn't have a scientific term for King Kong's butt crack. So his son, Leon, said it's a gunge. So the <laughs> synopsis is... A life of a shy young Indian student slowly falls into pieces during a family road trip. Yes. I don't know if I like that. I, I think well, it gives a little too much away. I think it would have just been like a family goes on a, um, a dysfunctional family trip. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't think it gives that much away. Uh, I mean, it really could. But anyway, uh, it's direct. By, yeah, by saying it falls to pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Directed by... Uh, Kankana Sancharma. And then it was produced by a bunch of people, but we know this gentleman. Uh, oh yeah, the casting? Uh, no, no, the producer. Oh, Abhishek Chave. Oh, my bad. Uh, Uda Punjab, yeah. Centuri, and that one with uh, a certain shot. Correct. Uh, he also worked with Vishal Bardwash at the beginning of this. They said this one's dedicated to Vishal Bardwash. Mm -hmm. I believe I researched it said that he was the one that got this person's... Uh, Who, this is they, her... They started her... He, got, he helped her start her own movie company. Oh, okay. Whatever production company. And is this, am I, am I, this is her first film, am I right in that? Might be. I, th I, I think I remember that. But obviously, it's starring a whole bunch of people. Uh, most notably, though, uh, I think the star of it is... Vikrant Nasi. Who, I'm glad we actually watch this now. Know him from music part. <laughs> yes. So, uh, that, that's wonderful. Um, but Kalki. Kalki Kaglin. Uh, Renvir, Renvir Shori. Shori. Uh, Om Pori, yep. uh, just a whole uh, gem who I think was in Padmavat, right? Uh, yep. Yes. He's the uh, gay guy. Yeah, the gay guy. guy. Uh, Padmavat, Ranveer. So, so many people. Uh, and it's definitely, I would consider it an independent film. Yes, it feels that way. And, and that's a good thing. 100% independent film. Um, so, this is going to be 100% spoiler review, which is how we like to do it. If you haven't watched it, yep. if you don't like to be spoiled, <laughs> go watch it, come back, see our review. Some of you like to be spoiled, you naughty little. You know, little boys and girls. Uh, you're about to be spoiled. Yeah. But yes, Rick, your initial thoughts. Um, I didn't like it as much as I was hoping I would. Mm -hmm. uh, the trailer, I remember it, me thinking, oh my goodness, this has all the feels of a really incredible independent film. And it even felt like it was going to take really dark turns to the point of almost being like horror. Mm. And since it didn't go that way, I guess I went in with somewhat of an expectation of that based on the trailer mm. and a lot of the buzz. Cause I had heard, we had heard things about this being like yeah. Oscar level yeah, 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 yeah. and I didn't find it to be Oscar level. I felt it to be enjoyable. I'm glad that I watched it. Mm -hmm. Um, I have some problems with it, mm -hmm. but, uh, so other than that, my recommendation would be to people, if you haven't seen a death in the guns, you'll probably enjoy it, but I wouldn't go out of my way to necessarily mm -hmm. see it. I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was, I really liked it. There was something that kept me from loving it. Okay. Uh, like I like most of this. I liked the story it was trying to, like the message it was giving across. Sure. I liked, I liked all the actors. I thought they did a, a, a really good job. And I thought you'd like the ending. Yeah, yeah I did. that's a Corbin ending. Uh, I, I did really enjoy that ending. Um, but there was uh, the, the one big thing, I don't know if we want to get into it right now, but um, it was mostly the dialogue writing for me. It took I'm me out you. of it sometimes. I'm, I'm uh, with you. And it's, it's a hard thing, and I think I know why. Because it was written by not only the director, but another uh, somebody else who wrote the additional screenplay. Mm -hmm. This is her first writing. Mm. And it's also her first, she did a short film before this, and it was her first feature. So I'm assuming that's why. 
because it sometimes you can just tell like because yes. what I'm talking about when I it's it was actually not just the writing because I actually thought the story and the whole writing That's of it the, was good. I think the be, I think the story is the best part. Good. About it. Yes. The dialogue, which happens in some films, like I don't know if you remember um, uh, Venom, uh, which was the Spider Man with Tom Hardy. The writing was atrocious. It was amazing that I didn't hate that film. Well, it's because Hardy's so yeah. freaking good. And I think the actors in this also <laughs> helped out with that in terms I of... I agree. It's just that the dialogue, sometimes it didn't feel like... It almost didn't feel real sometimes. Correct. They were just writing stuff to write stuff as Correct. opposed to making it natural. Correct. So that's what kept me from loving it. Because I actually... I was, I, I was engrossed most of the time. I actually... I think different from Rick probably. I, I was... Interested in what's happening on the screen the entire time. What took me out of it, though, sometimes, was when they were talking to each other. And it wasn't their acting. That's, that's the thing. It's, it's, I, I don't know if some people can't pick up on that. Like, there's a yeah. difference between bad writing and bad acting. There, there is. And, and it wasn't and, bad acting. In no, this. and I, I agree with you. I think, I think the actors did the best they could with what they had. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it, it's, it's, I hope... It's the best way to help you recognize it because for people who are trained in it and see it all the time, we, we can differentiate instantly when we say it was the writing and not the acting. And yes, we recognize that there's a possibility of things being lost in translation, obviously, mm -hmm. because we're getting... But, but also a lot of it was in English. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of it was in English. Um, and there's just... Um, <laughs> You just have to watch good writing mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, so, for example, Aaron Sorkin. Mm -hmm. Also, in India, uh, Anurag Kashyap. Yes. He is probably one of the best dialogue writers Agreed. I've ever seen. Agreed. Uh, because it, it just needs to be sound natural, not like... Because... I don't want to... Anyway, yeah, that, that well, was... Here's, that here's was, a good way yeah. to describe it. Uh, good writing, the words sound like... And this is really also a definition of good acting with both of them, but especially in the writing aspect of it, the words coming out of the person's mouth, let's say we're having a conversation, the words sound like they're happening in the moment as a response from what you said, because I just had a thought based on what you said, mm -hmm. versus this is something I've already preconceived and I'm gonna say this because this is gonna sound right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that was my biggest thing with it. And I know I didn't wanna start it off with the negative, but we did, um, but I don't, cause I actually really enjoyed this film. Uh, and I would recommend this film. I would tell them, forgive the writing a little bit. That's what I would do. I, I actually yeah. enjoyed this film quite a bit. If, um, and if somebody said to me, hey, should I watch A Death in the Gunge? Mm -hmm. My response would be, yeah, I didn't love it. You mm -hmm. might. Yeah. Um, so, but the other parts that I, I did really love. I, I really enjoyed, one, obviously, the story. I, I That's really, my favorite I part. enjoyed the message that they were getting across. And I think some people might not understand the message. Because I've heard some, either they, people really love this film, or they didn't like it, they thought it was boring. Mm. And like at the end, when it turns out he... Won't, won't yeah, again, big spoiler, spoiler Please go away if you haven't watched it. Uh, when he kills himself. Yeah. Um, I, I, I saw some reviews after I watched it. <clears throat> and certain people were saying they didn't understand where that came from. Or we, didn't, we didn't know anything about his backstory. And I, I thought that was kind of the point. I did too. Anybody could have issues. Everybody has their own issues yeah, in, uh, in, in life, and you don't know. And so the way, like, there's anything that could put them over the edge. And you could see in this film, and I, I want to applaud uh, Vikrant. I thought he did a phenomenal I job. I did, too. Um, because he was actually, you could tell, crying for help. Yes. In, like, in, the, like, in, in, small, in ways. small ways. And he wanted to attach himself to certain people. He was like, right. a, he was like a puppy almost. Oh, the, the, whole, um, the whole misunderstanding he has mm -hmm. with Kalki's character. Mm -hmm. um, I get emotional thinking about it. Yeah. Because, and I, that for me, like we've been saying this whole time, the story itself, like for, for the... For the writing to get stodgy and be unbelievable in some places, I think the film's worth a watch in order to get the larger point that you get at the end. Mm -hmm. Because that is the point. If you watch this film, if you if you see the film twice, mm -hmm. you'll pick up a bunch. You will pick up a, you'll pick up on the things that unfortunately this does happen with a lot of people. A lot of people who have a family member or a friend who takes their own life. 
they become extremely introspective and, and it's a shock. They're like, we didn't see this coming. Mm -hmm. But then when they look, they realize, wow, there was a sign, there was a sign, there was a sign. And that's, that's part of the mm -hmm. reason this is such a great story is yeah. because it does give you all of these little markers that signal what can happen, especially when you talk about the issue of bullying. That's not just a, a, a school ground issue. That's a, adults deal with yeah, that. Yeah, and family. And deal families with. deal with that, and it can push people over the edge. But another thing I want to applaud them on, um, the fact that they didn't really make anybody a villain. Yes. It was almost just that these are people, everybody's people, and they're all consumed with themselves. They're not consumed with yes. anybody else, even if it's in their family. They're I'm consumed with me, right? Uh, and but I want to applaud because that's how it is. It's not that yeah. there's a villain. There's not a big schoolyard bully. No, that's, exactly. that's what leads it. It's the little things. In that's life. the villain. Yeah, the, the villain, the antagonist <laughs> in this is, is is those little things. And it kept diverting it, uh, which might might have been why people thought like it was like where did that come from? Because maybe you thought something was going to happen to the little girl. Yeah. Um, but it was obviously really, when she's when she's gone. Yeah, you. But it's really. I, I thought there was going to be like a bigger thing with the the help. The the uh, entire time because they they, right. they kept bringing them into the fold. I yeah. thought it was going to be more of a like they kept teasing the horror aspect of it, like little little teases. Yeah. here and there, and then uh, they ended up going with the obviously the the story that we got. But um, I I, I liked that that they there wasn't any particular villain. It I was kind too. of more of a normal story. And they said in the beginning it was based on a true story. I don't know what story, but it's it's more of just a. There's millions of people that have dealt with this. Well, yeah, I think millions of people who haven't just dealt with the fact that you have someone in a close circle like that who takes their own life, but you're also dealing with. I thought the dynamics. This is, is going to be a compliment to the writing in story. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just dialogue, yeah, yeah. right? A compliment to that is they, <clears throat> they created believable family problems, yeah. which were the contributing factors that weren't just this weekend. No. What you saw here in the dynamics are the dynamics that have been with this family forever. Yeah. And they're just being seen now at this family vacation. And that's what makes them so troubling for, for Vikrant's character mm -hmm. is that this is the kind of thing he's had to do <clears throat> For his whole life, yeah, deal with the family, and then obviously what he had to get, deal with in school, yeah, and his other problems he was having that don't have to do with his family. Yeah, he was a very troubled person, and when once he was, I think the the straw that broke the camel's back was he thought he was going to get to be in a relationship with Kalki. Yeah, and that was his last ditch effort. That was the like, last straw for him. I'm going to see you in Calcutta, right? And she was like, No, no, that was just we, yeah, that was, was we just having fun, having fun. And he was like, <laughs> I. I thought you were going to be the one person I could finally talk to. Yeah. And share my uh, life with. And so it, he was a very troubled soul. And I, yeah. I really enjoyed that. Now, it's unfortunate because I could have like loved this film. Me too. I was uh, frustrated. And I was, <laughs> there was just that one point, like, I, cause I could have been like, this could have been up in my top 10 if I could have, if the writing would have been Andre Kashia style of yeah, natural this, this, dialogue. This could have been, it's a very different film, but did you ever see The Big Chill? I don't know. It's a great film from mm. back in the 80s. It may even be like 79, but I think it was the early 80s. And it had a lot of named people at the time. It had uh, Kevin Klein and Glenn Close. Uh, a very funny trivia thing is, is that... Um, oh, good grief. Kevin Costner. No. Oh. Kevin Costner actually <clears throat> plays the dead friend at the beginning of the movie. And it centers around them losing a friend. Mm. And them all getting together, and the big chill is about their friends dead, and they talk about all of their all of their baggage comes up. Yeah. On this weekend, centered around the death of a friend, I was expecting that the writing in the big chill. Mm -hmm. In fact, it might be Aaron Sorkin. Is it? It might be. Yeah, he's great. Right? Yeah, uh, it's just it's a dialogue relational driven. Another thing that I, I really enjoyed about this film, though, was the world that they created. I thought they did a phenomenal job in creating 19... It felt like I think the it was 70s. 1979, It right? felt like the 70s. It, it, they, Very good job. They, the cinematography and the, the costuming, the costuming and, and everything. The hair was a spot on. Yep. It, they really created a world that was actually although, very different than a lot of Indian films we've seen. Although I will point out that when they were having a little sing-along around the, 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 the living room, his guitar playing... <laughs> I was like, oh, God. Oh, we're going here. 
But yeah, that I I felt like it was a very, especially for somebody who this is their first attempt at writing and directing. Yeah, it's a very solid job. I, I would mean, this love is way better than a lot of people's first oh, attempts. Absolutely. <laughs> like so, there's definitely more good than bad. Yeah. I just was thinking and still do. This had this could have been. This could have been great. Exceptional. Yeah, like off the I charts. think the only thing that kept it from me because, like, like I said, on everybody, I thought Kalki did a good job. Obviously, Vikrant, I thought he did a really good job. I would love to see, obviously, Ompori, who I think this is one of the first things. This is one of the first, yeah, that we have seen him in. Yeah, and we know obviously he's a legend. legend. Uh, wait, no, did we see him? Was he in uh, with, with? Was that Ompori with uh, Nasseruddin and McBool? Uh... Uh, was that because they were the, the, the two yeah. guys? Was that uh, him? Wait, I'm trying to pull it up. No, McBool. Was that the one with his his wife? No, McBool was a uh, uh, Vishal. Yeah, I know. I don't remember. Hold on, I'm looking it up. One second. What year was that? You think? McBool. Yeah. 2000. Yes, it was. It was him. It was him. It was him. Okay. Yeah, so we've seen him in McBool. He was Inspector the, with Nasseruddin. They were the. Yes! The they were the two. They yeah. were, yes. So I love their characters in that. Uh, but yeah, the, I do want to see more from our friend from Padmavat because I think he's a really talented. Also, he looks like Sasha Baron Cohen a little bit. He does have a little Sasha Baron Cohen uh, in the face. Yeah, Jim. Going on. And he was in that video, well, the music video we just recently reacted to. Jim Sar Sarb? Sarbar? Or just Sarb? And then also Renvir Shori. Yeah. Who uh, I think is a, uh, a really good, we saw him in, um, was he? That wasn't him in Extraction, was it? Uh, no, he, an Extraction. No, it wasn't, okay, sorry. I was thinking. No, we saw him in. Um, um, well, he was in Grazy Medium that we saw. That's what it is, yes. And he was also in that. Yes, that's the one I was thinking of. That, yes. So, uh, yeah, so he's, we've seen him a couple we've times. We've enjoyed him very I, much. I think he's a real, I, everybody in this cast, it was like when you saw, what was that film um, that just everybody, I mean, there's films every year that you come out and you're like, oh, I guess the, the one that you just watched, with Aaron Sorkin. Yeah. Obviously, everybody's in it. Right. Like a thousand people. That feels like one of these, which is amazing that this person, first time writer, director, I believe. Right. Got to work with all these people. Got to work with all these really talented, I, obviously they're not the AA list, but you know, I don't care. They're, I think some of the, probably the best actors are not A-list actors. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, so it's, it's phenomenal that they also signed on for this. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I could have loved it. I really, really liked it. Uh, I could have loved it. I, I probably gave it a B, but it could have been an A+. Plus. Uh, <laughs> I, I would... Uh, I'll give it a B. Yeah. yeah uh, I was leaning C+, plus, but I think that's being mean. I, I think a B is a very fair grade. To yeah, give. and it was, it was really only the writing. But let us know what film we should watch and review next uh, down below. Um, this was actually a Patreon they get to do a poll every month, uh, one Hindi and then one regional. Everybody in Patreon, they're from Dahl. Jumped to, all over this. Um, this is what they picked for the month. So if this, you'd like to- This would make a great play. It would. It would be a really good play. That would play. be a really good play. Yeah. So yeah, let us know what, other, what film we should watch and review next down below.